And we're back. Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Monreal, back at it again with more Dream Daddy, and last time we were here, we caught up with Craig and recollected some of our college hijinks while he spent the whole time looking good. Uh, and on top of that, we had to do some dad duties and go to a parent-teacher conference with Amanda's teacher, Hugo, and his magnificent mustache. So, this time around, we are gonna keep going with that. We are spending some father-daughter time with Amanda, and we are gonna see what happens from here. Oh, and we are gonna meet the final dateable option in the game in this part very briefly. His name is Damien. He's a cutie. I love him. So, let's go ahead and do this. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you want me to just inject some fat directly in your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig right in. Oh man, these are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious? We have to eat through the pain. We enjoyed the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> oh lord, oh, which meme? All, all memes. So, you ever get to a point in a dating sim where you're like, man, I mean, all, all this talking is cute, but I'm, I'm really ready to see some booty hole right now, please. Like, that's kind of where I'm at right now, and coming out on top, I would have seen at least... Um, three butts, and at least maybe two or three wieners, too. But, you know, instead we get jokes, which is fine. But uh, I guess that's just how things are when the game isn't sexually explicit. You just get dialogue about other things. But at least I don't have to really worry about my player character getting pink eye while I'm playing this, so I guess that's fine. Anyway, we are going to go to that goth store, and she's not sure which one. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I don't know which one you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Uh -huh. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Yeah. There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so... proud. Speech! Amanda. Speech! Speech! I, I don't feel like yelling, so... speech. Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <coughs> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that will forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann McDad had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Oh. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains within our possessions. Thank you. Uh. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patron patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yes. Oh hey, chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Goth and Beyond. Oh man, this kind of reminds me of when I'm at my job and parents are just like buying... <laughs> or like kids are buying like big titty anime or whatever and their parents just look so uncomfortable because there's really nothing there for them. But... 
sometimes you just gotta go with it. So we are gonna be a frugal dad and check out the clearance bin for hot deals. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 of, for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. I wonder if it would look good, or I would look good in purple eyeliner. Hell yeah, I would. Look, this is... <clears throat> let me... Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. What? Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian-inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you, do you want a coupon or something? I can get you a coupon. <laughs> Will you leave if I give you a coupon? <sighs> Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Oh, well, it would seem that I've outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. I actually really like Damien. Oh, well, spoilers, you're not supposed to know his name yet. I really like this character's uh, idol poses. He really <laughs> does a lot of sweeping gestures and is very... Um, what's the word? He does a lot of gay hand movements, and that's really cute to me. Anyway, whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're in Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dadtron5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. Ah. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? Ugh. The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried if she, that she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool, Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. I really wish there was a good abbreviation for that. I'ma just call it Ice Road Ghost Truckers. Oh, hell yeah, they have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. So apparently this is like supposed to be like a parody of like Supernatural and like some shit that's on TLC or um, maybe the History Channel. I don't know what it is, but I know it's like that vein of uh, reality TV. But anyway, I'm not gonna lie, none of this particularly interests me. Uh, so I'm uh, kind of just go through this because we have something pretty exciting coming up here. We are going to be going to the barbecue tomorrow, which means we are going to formally introduce ourselves mm -hmm. to a lot of the dads that we have met so far um, and get to know a little bit more about them and make plans to talk to them later. But other than that, uh, if you were wondering also, I know a lot of people have been let's playing this game, but if you haven't been checking it out, don't forget there, there aren't really sex scenes in this game. Um, you can have sex like Robert sexually propositioned us yesterday. Well, not yesterday, on our last video. But, like, it's not really that kind of game, which is what I was getting at, is that you really need to stay for the story and how cute it is, basically. It's basically just a feel-good game. So if you're looking to see Booty Hole, uh, you need to probably move on and look at some other videos. But luckily for me, that means I don't gotta um, really edit these that much because there's nothing not safe for work in it. Anyway, I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Colum and Flint Dogbone after the disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Z Z Z Z dot 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 Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We 
We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is a lot better at this than I am. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, uh, you excited for the cookout today? Let's see. Uh, I'ma be real and say, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Uh, also, if y'all are like this, and you have like a particularly trashy or terrible store food you like, you should comment on that in the comments, because I, in particular, I love stale fries, and I love hot fries, and I will eat them very vigorously, despite realizing they taste terrible. I don't know what it is, I just love it, I love it. I just love the texture of it. But... I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies. I also actually do like those store-bought sugar cookies sometimes. I like it when they have the sprinkles on them, but not like some of the frosting they use. Yeah, those are bad. Which means they're more for me. Hmm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? <sighs> I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in this corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Huh. Dad, your beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. What? What? No, we have to be fashionable. Oh, shit, I skipped some dialogue. Well, basically what she was saying, or our character was saying, is that it's the barbecue is going to be pretty soon, so we should start getting ready. But Amanda's like, we need to be late. Um, who shows up to a cookout on time? And now <laughs> we're saying, you know what? We're going early just because you said that. However, that is example number, I don't even know what number we're on, that this is not an ethnic parent being simulated here, because uh, I have never been on time to a cookout in my life, um, unless it was at my own home, and even then I've been late to those a few times, because I usually wake up like in the middle of the cookout, because I sleep in pretty late. But, I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's home with a store-bought veggie plate, and I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I guess we're not as early as I thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and a smell of hot dogs... Oh, shit. My dyslexia kicking it up. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set up our veggie plates. Set up? No. Yeah, I guess we manually activated our be veggie plates for combat. Nah. We place our veggie plates on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> oh, that's intimate. Um, <laughs> Welcome, I'm so glad to see you two are here. And, oh, you brought veggies! <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Oh. Yo, what's good? This is Christian and Christy. They're the twins. Ah. They stare creepily and say nothing. Man, his children really <laughs> look a lot like him. Good lord. Um, ah. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek and she smiles. Oh, she looks so happy here. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Mm. Uh, I'll have to go look for him. Mm. Wh what? You'll have to... Oh, Joseph takes a moment to regain his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Bonray and his daughter, Amanda. I'd shake your hand, but I got a glass of wine that needs tending to. I I love her. She is designed to be loved. She is one of the best characters in this game. Uh, nice to um meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I gotta go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. So what this is alluding to is, if you don't remember, in the previous part, when we were hanging out at the bar, Mary actually hit on us, which implies she's maybe a little bit unfaithful. Or maybe she just uh, needs a real man who doesn't wear sweaters over <laughs> uh, his shoulders like that. Um, or wears... Um, I don't know, maybe she's just very bored of this 
seemingly idyllic suburban life they have because man that is like a very suburban husband she has there uh, and you'll find out it goes even further than that, because this dude is also like a, a youth minister or something, I forgot, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. It takes all my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> well, my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around to try some of the food and spread. Oh, shit. <laughs> Man, I keep fucking this up, dude. You can tell I'm a little bit out of it. So if you don't know, I have been... I had to re-record this. Um, this is going to be a double feature with Earthbound. I'm going to release an Earthbound video, too. Um, and for whatever reason, I forgot to fucking record. Or I forgot to hit the record button the last two times <laughs> I've tried to record this. So I had to start all the fuck over, and I'm a little bit tilted by that. So pardon me if I'm tired and making mistakes. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I picked up some deviled eggs, Amanda grabs a small paper plate, and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh. I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad, who are you going to party with when I'm off at school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Dad. Ugh, they're just going to want to talk about the weather. Ugh. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this, plate of <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me to the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar and almost have sex with him? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher and his mustache? Um, hey, I know Craig. Hello. Oh, and it's River, too. She's so cute. But wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. So as per usual in dating sims, for some reason you just happen to live near all these fucking beautiful ass people who are always just very interested in meeting you and are not assholes for the most part. Lucky for us. But I think I will talk to Robert and Brian first and then we will cut the video and next time around we will talk to the rest of the people and move on to the main segment of the game. But for now, let's do this shit. Talk to Robert and Brian. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Ah, shit. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Bon Ray, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch eyes emoji in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. <laughs> bon Ray, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Well, we were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Uh, it's good to see you taking care of your daughter like that. I bet she loved it. Hey. And it's great she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Well... Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art. She won a local art competition for that art. Yeah. Did I put it out <laughs> too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Oh. Anyway. Really? I haven't been camping in years, not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened the last time? Oh. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and I were out in the backcountry. Johnny Boy's a strong kid, met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. 
Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy behind. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. Hey. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with y'all. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river and he lost a flip flop. Missed the shit out that kid. Brian and I laugh nervously. Uh-huh. Or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. Oh. I'm I'm toads kidding. Uh-huh. Whew. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghosts locked the doors. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, well, then hit the brake, I guess, and then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Yeah. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Daisy is actually really cute. She's one of my favorite kids in the game. (laughs) I like her little kitty face. Anyway, I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not really sure if I have the materials required to properly cook you. Mm. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert, <laughs> wait a minute. Are you are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Y- yeah, Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially the episode where Colum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, that's such quality reality television. You know, I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and, uh, war documentaries. Alright, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over... Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Right. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. They are very cute. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Uh, it's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? Yeah, she just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every resource in... Resor... Shit! Recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying. Every time we took her to a restaurant, that's like how I am now, XD. She bit people, too. (laughs) Uh, Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to by law. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe you should try to put together a little play day for them. You know, they do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. And that's that. So, that is going to be it for this part. I'm going to upload this video as soon as possible. I'm a little annoyed I didn't get it uploaded earlier, but, you know, sometimes these things happen. In the meantime, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I'm going to be doing some more Earthbound videos and this. Also, I'm probably, as far as who I'm going to actually date first, I'm looking at alternating between doing both Matt and Robert's dates, just because 
Um, those are my S tier dudes. I'll probably read off my daddy tier list <laughs> next part. Um, but Matt and Robert are at the top, basically. So uh, if you have any other suggestions for who you'd like to see sooner than later, feel free to comment leaving that. And anyway, I will catch you nerds later. Thanks for watching and bye.